Hey folks, um, welcome to post-production workflows and technology and online video environments. This is going to be a comprehensive overview of the kind of tech that we uh, use on our stuff. So just a quick presentation outline. We're going to talk about server architecture first and foremost, local versus you know sort of local area networks, it's rate striping considerations the for thor throughput, network considerations, codec oh, selection, God. pre and post workflows, storage do's and don'ts. Uh, well, a few of our tips and tricks for video compression, storage, that's offline, online. I'm going to give you guys a secret to the best archival system that, I mean, that, I've, that I've seen. We're talking about backups, and very specifically there, obviously backups are very important. Everyone here knows that, right? Like everybody who, who here backs up their stuff. Let's get a show of hands. Great, cool, fantastic. Backups on-site, on-site, off-site tape. And finally, we're going to go through some non-linear uh, editors, obviously the, uh, the Creative Cloud family and the open source alternatives. First question, um, what is H.264? It's for video. Oh, control. my God. I nope. feel like that's I just it. That's it. The end of the presentation. Thanks, oh, everybody. Oh, Jesus. That's not what this That's is about. The worst we thing. named this a very boring presentation on purpose uh. because so so for those of you who came yesterday, we we did the um, the hacking game where <laughs> I pretended to hack the Wi-Fi and then the FBI came after us and we had to hack every Xbox in the world in order to crash the price of Bitcoin. It was a lot of fun. Um, I wanted to troll people with that, but we trolled people yesterday. And so today we're gonna do what we did not said yesterday, which was Anthony here is going to uh, be writing a game live. It's not going to be good. It's just going to be a cute thing it's we can do at the end game. that'll summarize all of our experiences here and make us better people. And um, we'll also kind of do, I don't know, like, you know, we, I figured out this yesterday. Check this out. It's like now I have a camera on stage with me, right? You, can, you know what I'm saying? It's almost like they're here in the room with It's almost with like you. you're here in the room with us. We might be doing some magic tricks. Ooh, yeah. This is going to be our, this is going to be our uh, uh, anything goes panel. But I do want to share with you first and foremost. So, to be clear, anybody who is here for post-production workflows and technology and online video environments, it is safe to get out at this point. If you're not, if you're actually here for this information, feel free to talk to me later. That's not what we're going to be covering today because, as you can see, it's pretty boring, and no one wants to do that. But I will talk about it a little bit, Anthony. And again, Anthony is going to be chiming throughout the throughout the course of this. You're going to be asking questions. Somebody give me a heroic name. <laughs> Garfield, very good. So we're going to be playing. Somebody give me a villainous name. Mm. Gilgamesh. Right, we're, doing, we're going to do Garfield twice. It's going to be a man versus himself kind of conflict story. <laughs> um, I wanted to show just uh, just well, uh, uh, how many people like make videos and are interested in making videos. Show hands. That's like a good, strong majority of the crowd here. That's nearly unanimous. So I'm going to talk about, uh, I will just to be serious and just kind of give you something useful that you can get out of this. I'm going to talk about a few videos and why I think they are important and why I can't find my playlists. There it is. I have it under stuff. I'm going to talk about three videos. Number one, who's seen this one? Star Fox 64 Ligma. Show of hands. Oh, you're in for a treat. Welcome to your new favorite video, everybody, right? Oh, hold on. Eyes open, four enemies ahead. I've got him. Careful. I heard Andros gave his troops Ligma. Ligma? What's Ligma? Flippy, no! <laughs> <Ligma> my balls! <laughs> <laughs> All right. You're probably wondering why I played that video. Um, here's the thing. Um, I think this is a good internet video. <laughs> But let's break it down. Like no joke. Like let's break it down for a second, because it does a couple of things. Um, it does a couple of things that I think, if you're interested in making your videos pop online and getting them out there, that you have to think about. Which is, one, it does not overstay its welcome. It's only 22 seconds long, and uh, it wins at one of the hardest tests that a video could do. Because I'm sure you've all done this. How many people have been to a, like a party and it turns into a YouTube party? And by that I mean someone shows a video. And then someone's like, oh, you think that's funny? Yeah, 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 check this out. So that's, that's, I call that very good. About half of you have gone to a YouTube party. When you go to a YouTube party and when the party turns into a YouTube party, right, that's like battle rap. That's like a, that's like a dance battle. Do you know what I mean? Because someone's going to throw something down 
And then when it's your turn to like throw a video down, you better have some freaky fresh moves, my dude. Otherwise, you're, you, you, and we've all been there where we show a video and you're like, hey, yeah, yeah, let me show you this really funny video. And then people are watching it and then you're like, oh no, <laughs> people don't think this is funny or people don't like this video. And it's a very specific brand of awkward, right? We all know what that feeling is, right? Everyone hates that feeling. We as social animals abhor that feeling. If your video can avoid that, if your video can be the kind of video that someone wants to show somebody else, for whatever reason, that's super helpful in terms of getting it out there. Because at the end of the day, you can only rely on your Facebook feed and your Twitter account to get it out to so many people, right? Um, this one works in that way. Because it's, as you saw, the first thing we did was like, hey, let me show you this video. And it, think it was pretty funny, and we played it, right? So that's, I think, a, a good test. And a lot of the times when you look at that, like why, what, 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 what kind of videos does those work? Well, it's like this one does need a little bit of sound, but like technically, if I had this on my Twitter feed and I saw this, I wouldn't necessarily, I'd still get what's going on, right? I'm still getting the subtitles. I'm still kind of getting a sense of what, I, I'm not getting the very good impressions and the sort of work that's being done into it, but I still have a reason to watch it and I still like, get something out of it. So we'll see a lot of skits these days and people like tweet us skits and stuff and it's like, just all dialogue, and you're like, okay, well, whoever is watching this, I'm not saying that it can't work, obviously. There's, you know, for example, um, let's talk about one of our, one of our favorites. Uh, somebody, somebody, pick, somebody pick a type of uh, uh, pornography. Fisting. Fisting was said with such confidence. Such confidence. Such confidence and such familiarity that I have to choose fisting. So right, so this one was one that Anthony wrote based on based on a tweet that I wrote. That's true. Can we show, wait, I just want to show that. I just want to show this really quick. So just this is this is an example of this. So this is a great example of here's an idea and how to execute. Who's seen this one? Oh, only a few people have seen this one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and play it for you, and we'll talk about it. Hey, Jimmy. Yeah. What's the new Wi-Fi password? Uh, it's four words, all uppercase. Cool, what's the uh, first word? Uh, no, it's just that. It's one word, all uppercase, four words, all uppercase. What, is it one word or four words? It's four words, all uppercase, but it's one word, all uppercase. Yeah, they're, they're super easy. I don't understand what's the problem. Super easy. So I'm typing F-O-U-R-W-O-R-D-S, all caps. No, 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 it's one word, all lowercase. It, it's like any other Wi-Fi password. No! It's one word. You said there were four words! There is four words! Dude, I'm gonna grab that router and just beat you to death! Wait, what network am I even connecting to? Rocket Jump 5G. What? Uh, I'm done. I'm gonna type O N. No! It's four words, all uppercase! Four words, Jimmy! Not words, word! It's four words, all uppercase, one word, all lowercase! I'm just gonna jerk off later. So let's let's just talk really quickly about the life like the life of that video, which was that's a bad Wi-Fi password, right? Let's see here. This is where it started, which was I thought. Where's my Twitter? Maybe it was four words all over case what you did. I don't think I'm that dumb. This is a very bad panel. Hey, 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 hey. What? Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right. Okay, let me just back up. This was a tweet that I put out. Nobody saw it. In fact, it was so bad that Twitter deleted it. <laughs> Unbelievably, Twitter deleted this great tweet. Here we go. This was, this was 8.20 p.m. on for October 30th, 2015, which is the most frustrating Wi-Fi password in the world is four words all uppercase. Because in a way, the joke isn't explained, right? Because you have to think about it. It's a little too heady of a tweet because you have to, you got, it gets too much effort into it. So that was October 2015. 
So a couple months later, I was still ranting about the fact that my dumb tweet did nobody seem to like. And I ranted long and hard enough that Anthony heard the call <laughs> and wrote this together, which in a way helps expand upon the joke and illustrate it. So what was interesting about that, I think, is this is like this was a video that was a quick, just whatever, we threw it out there type of video, right? Yep. Now, what was crazy about this is, boy, oh boy, did they pick, did the news pick up on this one? Like USA Today. I didn't even see Talked this. about this. This Wi-Fi password is worse than your parents, right? Like literally, we had the Daily Dot wrote about it. And this is just them reposting a YouTube video. This is, by the way, not news content. I want to be clear. Everybody, it is not content at all, but this is them reposting it. Why? Because I think it's a relatable problem. It's a, it's a thing that people can like latch on to, and it has a promise and a payoff, right? Which is like, the promise of it is, oh, this is the worst password, right? Like, look at how they're writing these headlines. They're writing the headlines for us. They're writing the clickbait for us. This is the worst Wi-Fi password ever created, right? That's a challenge to the person watching it to be like, all right, I'll see about that. So there's a challenge in the payoff, and you get to see it play out, right? <laughs> USA Today, like, right, think about when this was, December 28th. Wi-Fi at your parents' house is a hot, hot topic uh, around the holidays. Hilarious jokes about, you know, Wi-Fi and having to use your parents' Wi-Fi. USA Today getting on that Wi-Fi energy, right? Uh, while you're doing that, um, if you guys had to choose, Garfield is like, okay, I'm going to go get the Holy Grail. Does he choose to strike out on his own, or does he ask John for advice first? <laughs> John for advice? Yeah. Okay, it sounds like that was the majority opinion. Where's we the first place he goes to find the Grail? What's the first step on his quest? An Italian, I, I like Italian restaurant. All right, we're gonna do that. All right. So if we look the payoff for this is gonna be like fine. So keep your keep your hopes like right in the middle. The most frustrating Wi-Fi password ever. The simple word that's baffling everyone. Right. This is such clickbait. Right. If you don't want you anyone to the access your Wi-Fi, give this mind-bending code a try. Watch the infuriate. Right. These are all. But, but what's interesting about this is like, look at how many emotional words are in this. Right. Frustrating. Uh, my mind being less emotional, but like infuriating, right? It's it. These are they're appealing to. I think one of the most powerful things that you can appeal to in a, a, a video, which is your emotion. And emotion can be humor, right? It can be uh, righteous anger over stuff. And everyone knows how well righteous anger works on Twitter, and how much stuff is essentially that righteous or otherwise, right? That's one direction you can go. You can also go. Uh, I mean, we've all seen this guy, right? Right, we've seen this one, yeah? 102 million views. At the time, the most viral video of all time, the most shared video of all time. Why? Because built into this video is the idea that sharing it is, lets you feel like you're doing something. Right? They built that into this video. They're like, we need to make sure that people know who this guy is. Where you share it, people will know. That's all you have to do. They weaponized the most lazy thing you can do, which is just share something. But it's preying on your emotions, because that emotion is, I feel like I've done something worthwhile. Right? I've done my good deed for the day. So think about that. Think about how you can engage people emotionally. Think about uh, uh, that side of it. I'm going to show another YouTube video that I think is, uh, again, really good. Um, it's under my stuff playlist. Ligma, very good. Ski jump fail. This may be my favorite video just of all time. Three seconds long. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Hold on one more time. So what does so that's not the original copy of it. The original copy of it has another half second because you hear him in the distance go Ooh. Exactly. That's exactly it. Why would you cut out, uh, I think it was fail blog, which was what it was originally. Here it is. This is the original. Listen, listen, how, now, listen to how much better this version is, how much more shareable this suddenly is. Whoa. You may not have heard it. Hold on. I'm just going to turn it up. Like, real quiet here. Listen to it. Whoa. Um, so this is why do I like this video and why do I show this all the time? Again, it, this wins at this wins at YouTube parties. Whoa. It's satisfying. The sound effect is a big part of it. Without sound, it's like it's fine. It's funny. It's visually funny, but without sound, like it sounds a big part of this, right? Use every aspect of your of your medium at your disposal. Um, and I want to show one more here really quick.
two 90-year-olds complete in a sprint race. This is maybe like one of my favorite examples of this principle, which is what I call anticipation, setup anticipation. This is two 90-year-olds just racing. Now tell me this is not one of the most gripping YouTube videos you've ever seen. We'll let this play. <laughs> Do you, but do you see what happened there? You guys saw what happened there, right? This is a two nine years complete and sprint race. So you're like, okay, cool. There's a lot of these videos of like old folks doing doing this stuff, and it's not that impressive and not that interesting. Why did this one? This wasn't the original upload, but the original one got millions of views. Why did that one get shared? It's because, as simple as this is, the story this tells is very basic, right? What is the story of this? This is, this is, this is the uh, uh, rabbit and the hare, or sorry, the hare and the tortoise, right? It is anticipation. It is right here, about 15 seconds, 14 seconds in, every single person in this room literally was like, oh, wait, 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 he's catching up. Now you're invested in this video. Because now you're invested in, but, but like, if he just started off in front and he just someone beat someone in the race, that's not inherently interesting, right? It's only interesting because at the very beginning, he starts off and you're like, oh, this, this, the, guy, the, the guy in blue is going to win. Like, the only reason that you want to stick around on this at all is because you're like, okay, like, right, this video is done if he wins. This is a boring video. But then the moment right here when you're like, wait a minute, wait a minute, he's catching up. Hold, hold. hold. Right, now, now, you, now, you have to, now you have to get to the end of the video at this point, right? Because you've set up in the first, like, to me, I love this video because it's just how elegant it is. In 10 seconds, it sets up a reason for you that you are watching. Like, I guarantee you, you get this far, there's not a single person who gets 15 seconds into this video who doesn't watch the rest of the fucking video. Right? I need the name of uh, somebody who sucks. Somebody who's like just a real piece of shit. <laughs> Chad. Beautiful. Like, how intense is this now all of a sudden? And now you, you have the people in all the way through there, and you have to see how that goes, and it takes it all the way to the wire. And you'll notice, by the way, after I stopped it, right, technically there's another, what, five seconds of this video? I'm not saying that it's, it doesn't matter. It's the end of the video, but people are gone by this. If I had to guess what the graph of this looks like, it's going to be the usual drop-off, and then at 15-second mark, everybody beats it. Everybody finishes this video. And then right about here, everyone drops off. If I had to guess, this is what the, this is what the graph looks like. So again, something important to remember then for anything that you're making, anything you're trying to do in an online video sort of world, give people a reason to get to the end of the video, right? How much of the internet, and again, it, this is a very simple story that's being told. It doesn't need to be obviously this simple, but think about that in terms of like what you're doing because if there's no reason for me to stay through the whole video, then I got the rest of the, I got all of these great suggested videos that I can look at. Do you know what I mean? You got all kinds of stuff you can look at. Oh my goodness, where? Ein Groot for Bild for Jung und Oat. You're coming at it with all the like, fisting, he died. Like you, you've truly made this a MAGFest after dark kind of panel. Wow, this is a headline. Oh, uh, that's, yeah, he, this is, he was a Belgian. He died a year after, yeah. Anyway, well, that was a downer that was. How's it going, folks? The, the winner, I believe, Emil, was the winner of that one. <laughs> so uh, we have about, uh, we got a little more time here. We have quite a bit of time here. Thanks, for, by the way, thank you everybody for joining us on this MAGFest After Dark. Since there's so few, since there's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an intimate enough environment that I would like to open it up to questions. Let's do questions. Do we have a mic for that? Otherwise, I think we're, we're small enough that people can just shout them out. So any questions you have about literally anything, the writing process, that's Anthony's going to cover that one. Video stuff, I'll cover that one. Writing and video stuff. Any, but literally, I can't, I can't see you. I can't see you, so go ahead and... Uh, You're going to have to find that out for yourself at the end of this minute. Go ahead and stand up, everybody, and uh, shout it out.
What kind of stuff do you do? I think it's really, I think it's really tough right now if you're doing short videos. Because I mean, like, like, I love the guy. I mean, yeah, it sucks. Like, times change, my man. I mean, let's look at, let's look at maybe the only people right now who are keeping that up, right? Let's look. At, I mean, let, let me look. I think stuff changes all the time, though, you know. And sometimes the tides go with you, and sometimes the tides go against you. But let's take a look at at like corridor stuff, right? I mean, it could be anything, right? I mean, like this is the new. I mean, like I. So I. I won't be clear here. I love both of the people here that I'm going to show, but this is old guard, new guard, a little bit, right? So the new form, the new form of sketch is what ProZD is doing, isn't it? Isn't this what's being shared around? This is what's, this is what's favored on Reddit at the moment, certainly, right? Did you see this Pottermore stuff? I forgot, I, we haven't talked about this, have we? So th this is based off of, so this is, so because this is like lo-fi, right? And again, I, I want to be clear, I'm not judging any of this. I love this stuff. I think this stuff's hilarious. I share the hell out of this stuff. But this is reactive, and it can be reactive to what's happening right now. Everyone knows what's going on with Pottermore, right? Yeah. yeah. Do you know about what's going to happen with Pottermore? Yeah, they, they, you can just shit on the floor <laughs> if you're a wizard. <laughs> what do they do? Hey, JK, got anything? Hey, JK, got anything new to add to Pottermore? Back in the day, wizards constantly shit their pants. What? A Dementor's favorite food is diarrhea. What the fuck? Chocolate frogs were actually made out of shit. <laughs> but I mean, this is what's going around right now. But like, like, let's just, again, really quick here. We're talking about, you know, again, if we're going to go off of, again, there's, Hello, a, good morning, Your Honor. there's a lot of metrics that you can go by, right? Um, but views is about as good as any, right? Uh, somebody really quickly give me something completely random that I have to work into the story. Fish sticks? Fish sticks? What was the other thing somebody said? Some, some, some out. Okay, I'll do all of them. <laughs> so this is the so like this is the new normal, honestly, right? So this this is this may be the highest effort. Spider Man Cake Day may be the highest effort video I have ever seen on YouTube. No joke. Have you guys been familiar with this one? This is quarter digital, and I'm just gonna skip through it. They had a guy on the team. Basically, this is 100% CG in Blender. An eight-minute full CG video, this may be one of the highest effort videos literally on YouTube. We're sitting at sub one million here. And again, I'm again, not, not judging anything. Card games with voiceover. All right, it's card. my turn. Right. So maybe these are, the, right, when we talk about comedy, here's, here, you know, they're both kind of doing, they're doing kind of not quite, but like sketch sort of stuff. Uh, these are, in the eyes of YouTube and the YouTube audience, equivalent. So what that means is, but right, like what that means is you're not supposed, it doesn't mean you can't do this, but it means this is what you, this doesn't equal, it, right, it, 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 effort doesn't lead to more views. And for a second, it kind of did on YouTube, right? I would say back in like 2010, 2011, 2012, that sort of three-year period, there wasn't a lot of stuff out there. So anything that and also, nobody was doing it for money as really in the same way that we see it now. So, like, effort was rewarded back then. That's not the case anymore, I don't think. I think what, what is rewarded is what can be shared and what can be immediately consumed. I think ProZD, let's, I mean, so again, ProZD puts this stuff on YouTube. But let's be frank here, right? What is this? Uh, the last one was Pottermore trivia, right? Media tweets. 400,000, pretty much the same time. 217,000. Hey, JK. He's getting more, like twice as many people watching this on Twitter than he is on YouTube, right? So, and by the way, I think that Twitter has led to some of like the funniest stuff uh, uh, in this sort of format. But this is a new format. And that's the evolution of it. So if you're a filmmaker and you want to, right, you have to ask yourself what you care about. Do you care about doing a narrative? If you care about doing a narrative, then you just simply cannot expect the kind of views and the kind of uh, uh, attention that we were fortunate enough to be in the right place in the right time for, right? If you're doing comedy and you want to make people laugh, 
that should tell you quite a bit about what your, how to approach that goal, how to reach as many people as possible. And again, I'm speaking here about reaching as many people as possible. That's not necessarily ever always the best goal to have. Do you know what I mean? Hand? I think pre-existing audience is huge because I think the thing that has, the thing that I've seen in the last five years that I did not expect was how hard, um, how hard platforms held on to their people. So it was a time when, when we would have a video come out and we would put it on Twitter, I could, you, you know, you'd see where your views are coming from easily from my Twitter with less sort of folks following me, even though I don't have a good ratio on that now, it's like easily 40, 50,000 views was coming from Twitter from a tweet. So now Twitter added video to their platform. So when you put a YouTube link in Twitter, nobody goes over to it. Like this sort of thing where it's like, okay, I mean, just you do a comparison. This is 29,000 likes, 8.3 thousand retweets. Again, this is the same thing, but Twitter absolutely holds, that, holds stuff that pushes you off their platform back because everybody wants you to stay on their platform. Facebook does the exact same thing. You can put the exact same video on Facebook and it'll go, and it might not, but if you have a Facebook link to the same video, that will not get seen. Facebook's algorithms are pretty crazy. They'll scan your videos for end cards. They'll scan your video for uh, any evidence that you're pushing people off, uh, off site, and they, will de they won't delist it, but they'll suppress it within the platform. We've, we've seen that and we're like, well, shoot, if you want to do a video, you've got to upload on, on its own. And you know, Sung Wan's doing it right here. He's doing it on Twitter and he's also doing it on YouTube because they may be two separate audiences, but that's, that's a big part of it. So as a result, it's a lot harder to get an audience. One of the things that I think is really interesting is charting on Reddit. Like Reddit is, for, for better or for worse, just the place that people are going to see stuff. Right. Aside from seeing it on your Twitter feed, but if you, in general, if you want to say like, where, where are places that Reddit sort of really promotes and push, Prozy these up at the top here. There's a lot of, I mean, right, uh, there's a, uh, just try guys here. Um, there's a lot of YouTube drama bullshit because I think it's a lot of, uh, frankly, teenagers dealing with this sort of stuff. And that's the kind of stuff that they're, you know, kind of watching, you know, no judgment because we were all teenagers once. George, unbelievably a classic. Man, just get up here. You know, you know George Washington? Yeah, of course. He had a Cartoon Network show, didn't he? He did briefly, yeah. Um, but again, like this is this is the place, right? Where I mean, we saw, and we had a moment too where we were hot on Reddit and everything we put up, people were racing to put up. And Cordor actually has a, had a bit of a sort of similar thing. Rooster Teeth said they actually had some issues in the past because they would their stuff would get posted first to the Rooster Teeth subreddit, and then everyone would go see it, and then it wouldn't go on videos because videos is like the big gaping river of of, of traffic that you can divert over to you. A lot of times people are just hanging out on this platform. They're not necessarily going over to it. But like this is for us, this was the biggest place that we found new new audience. Collaborations was also big, but again, collaborations just happen less and less because a lot of the people that have audiences there are sort of less incentivized to do so. Um, so yeah, I think that finding an, an audience is going to be a lot harder than it was. I think that there's a lot of ways you can approach it, but I think the first step is just getting your stuff in front of people and getting some familiarity, familiarity there in the first place, which is why I don't think that doing which is why I don't think that doing stuff on Twitter or doing it on Facebook is necessarily a bad thing, uh, even if it's not totally sort of the style that you do. And I think all power to Sung Wan, because what he does is he does his skit stuff, but he also will just do like his board game reviews because he's a huge fan of board games and he'll do like unboxing videos uh -huh. and stuff. And these are getting, like look here, these are getting a fraction of the views here, but because he's consistent with it, uh, that's that's a big part of it, and I think more now so than ever was that is that consistency is a big deal. Like you have to have a consistency in terms of your schedule, otherwise you fall out. Whether or not you want to get in front of that train, because it's a train, and you gotta keep running the moment you stand in front of that train, is up to you. And how you keep running is gonna depend on how heavy your content is. If you're, I I am shocked a lot of times that corridors manages to keep up the kind of pace that they still do. Now granted, they have a team of a whole bunch of people now uh, helping them out with this stuff. It's not just Sam and Nico. But if you're solo or duo, like duo Q, you should be looking at sort of this sort of kind of production level because that's, the, that's what is going to allow you to even st uh, keep up with the kind of pace to keep some kind of consistency. As a platform to find people, I think it's good. I, look, I think Patreon is pretty good. I think the problem is you have to, ha okay, I mean, like, there's a couple of things. One, I'm not a fan of kind of the direction, and again, this is, obviously, this doesn't work for everybody, and this is just my opinion here, but I do not like the thing that Patreon sets up, which is a cent, not Patron. <laughs> Patron.com, baby! <laughs> 
My issue with Patreon fundamentally comes down to what is the relationship you are setting up with your audience. Um, I think Greg Miller does a really good job with uh, with kind of funny, but like just to I'm just I, I I do not know what I'm clicking on here, but like to to speak generally, there's a lot of people who are on here, and they set it up in such a way that it's like honestly, it's not it's like two steps away from just stripping, and like no problem. By the way, not a problem with stripping or anything, but this is what I, what I'm getting at is this, which is if you're constantly being like hey, you guys are the only reason I'm here. I love you guys. Like anything you put money up, I'll do it. Like I'll take requests or whatever. There's, to that extent, the, the more I see that, the more I'm a little like, ooh, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because anytime, if you're saying like, I'm putting something out there that I think has artistic merit, you really should not feel like if someone watches this, they're doing me a favor. Because at the end of the day, like I said, you saw in the YouTube videos, right? You can look anytime, you can, I watch something on YouTube. Nobody ever forced, you're never forced to watch anything on YouTube. If it's a bad ad, you skip the ad. If it's a boring video, you go to another video, right? So the problem with if you set up that relationship of I owe you guys everything, you're my audience, I owe you everything, then that's what the relationship's going to be and you're beholden to that. So then if at any point you want to do something different, good luck because you owe them this and that's what you've trained them, to trained your audience to believe. I think the hard part is getting that audience in the first place, right? And getting the people together uh, uh, that you can actually have a Patreon that, that can work is, is building that audience in the first place. I think it's a second, it is a good second step. I think it's very, and it's one to have as you're sort of developing and growing your thing. But also I think be aware that, uh, think about what, Think about what, why people are here for, for you, right? If your thing is like, you know, look, this guy looks like he does illustrations, and that's, that's all he does, right? And he, he's focusing on doing illustrations, and he clearly loves doing illustrations. Yes, awesome, fantastic, right? If you want to be like, I want to do a whole bunch of different types of films, and I'm a filmmaker, I think that's a harder sell on Patreon. Patreon's like Kickstarter, right? You need to have a thing you're selling and a very clear transaction. So when I say I want to support this person, I know exactly what I'm getting. And the vaguer that is, I think the less effective a Patreon is. To, do a weird comparison. Patreon and Kickstarter and these sort of platforms to me are a little bit like Yelp in that the kinds of restaurants that really work well on Yelp are very specific. If you think about it, if you think about it, you're like, if you go to Yelp and go like, what's the top five star places? They're not, oh, not always, but in general, right? They all follow kind of a, a sim, sort of similar rule. Uh, what is the city that we're in? Is Rockville? National, National Harbor. So I'm just gonna, we're just going to just sort of go by. We're going to go ahead and redo a search, and we're going to look for literally the best restaurant in this region just to see if this, is, if this holds true. Where's the, where's the region in this area that like, is not like this weird tri-state area that we're in? Like, where's like a Alexandria? OK. All right, so if we're going to do restaurants. California, Alexandria, <laughs> California. Very good, very good. So four and a half stars, the people's drug. Don Taco. Here's the thing about all of these, though. A lot of these that have bad, where, when you read a bad review on Yelp, a lot of them are because the service is bad. And people hate the service, they give it the one-star review, it, draws, it drags the whole thing down. A lot of the places that do well on Yelp are like, they are known for one thing. They're the kinds of places, there's a little bit less so here, it's more so I think I've seen in California more, or they're like counter service, so you don't have to deal with servers or waiters. It's a very specific kind of thing because those types of places will do great on Yelp. I mean, how many times have you been to a place you're like, oh yeah, this place has really good donuts or whatever, and there it is, and you go there, and you go, you get your pay your money, you get your donut, you get out of there, you're like, that was a good donut, that's exactly what I expected, that's exactly what I wanted, that's what I got, I got a transaction out of it. Patreon works the same way, I think, in that if, if you are a very specific person in terms of what you're doing on Patreon, if you're saying like, look, uh, Podcasters, Captain Disillusion does video hoax debunkers and shares bloopers and deleted scenes. Singer songwriter, you get access to my tracks. It's very clear what I'm getting on there. It's a very clear transaction. That's the kind of stuff that works best on Patreon. I think the more vague that you're like, I want, I'm a filmmaker exploring so and so, and it's like, nah, I need something tangible that I can like interact with. I think the people that do the best also have something that you can physically, like, get access to, right? Be it behind the scenes, I think people who do like, like I mean, pins and like getting, selling uh, prints and doing stuff for that, so it's like a physical, tangible thing that you can get access to, these are, these are gonna do better on the Patreon side. I think it's opened up a lot of uh, opportunity for people to do that, which is why I think it's awesome, but that is, I think, the, the reality of what, how Patreon sort of incentivizes certain types of content. Sure, sure, sure. Like the whole, like, the, all of rocket jump. Do you prefer 
doing like the big, huge scale, like do you find you get more fulfillment out of the big scale videos, like with all the CG, or the small ones like the password video? Like, I think it depends, you, honestly. Like there's sometimes when you do like a shorter one, and you're like, this was fun, and this, like, like I think the most fun I've had recently was Asians parking at Costco. <laughs> so fucking, is, I've never seen a video that is so clearly by and for one guy. I'm gonna take that as a big old compliment. It's got a million views. But technically, this is the same, right, same effort, quote unquote, right, as far as like, and it bums me out that this doesn't get as much as this dumb video. Have you seen this one, folks? Yeah, yeah. Playing it. We all know Costco, right? Taking a So that's like a, a, maybe a, a, a fraction of a percentage of the effort of um, Anime Crimes Division. But I enjoyed doing that. That was awesome. So that's the, I mean, so yeah, like, I don't know. So for me, like, it can be both. I think it's just you find something that you like about different things. Can I ask you a question really quick? Can you see up here? I'm just going to. Wait, hold on. Who asked the question? Raise your hand. Who, raised, who asked the question? Oh, did they leave? They just left. It was her. It was, yes, it was Fisting yes. Girl. Fist, Miss Fist. Miss Fisting Girl. Yeah, could you just go ahead and just... Here, come, come up here really quick. Just come up here really quick. It's, that's up to you. Just, just, it's good to have a brand. Don't blink. Don't blink. Okay, right? Okay, great. Thank you. So you can sit down. Questions? I got another one. Oh, we got a guy back over there. What's up? What it is? So, so here's the thing. Is I, I love your dialogue and your writing and everything. I sense a butt coming. Or, an, or anime crimes division. Dialogue is actually... A good question. Good question. Good question. So dialogue is actually the last step in storytelling. It's the kind that gets the most attention because it's what it's flashy. people react to. Tarantino does it's, so good. It's flashy. It feels like it's the thing we can connect to the most because we talk to each other all the time. It feels like, the, like oh, it must be the most important thing in story. It is actually the least important part of story. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock was saying uh, the steps of writing a, a story are like breaking it out, getting all the, all the scenes together, understanding what the arcs are, what the act breaks are, and then adding dialogue. He didn't even say it as like it's part of the thing. He just like added. It's like, it's like fuck frosting on top, essentially. So what you basically want to do, and I'm not good at this because actual story structure I'm not like great at. I'm better at dialogue. Um, but what you generally want to do is make sure that your story is really, really solid and then use your dialogue to sort of massage you from scene to scene or to get you there in a way that's propulsive and fun. Because if your dialogue is good but your story is bad, that's a bad story. If your story is good but your dialogue is bad, that's... Um, I can't think of a movie that's like that right now. Story is good but the dialogue is bad? Star, actually, actually, the original Star Wars doesn't really have yeah. very good dialogue. A yeah, new the hope. original Star Wars, like, here's how you know. Watch it with someone who hasn't seen it before, and you're like, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Mark Hamill's bad. Yeah, like, I'm supposed to go to Tashi Station to get power converters. Like, that's not a cool line. That's not, but it does its job because it lets you know, like, hey, this guy's a little bitch. And, like, 
<laughs> it's it important. Is, he it has is, to grow. He has all, to grow. All dialogue is supposed to be part of a larger machine that is your story. Now, most of the stuff that you like that I've done doesn't have to have a larger story, or if it's like a video game like Borderlands, like the story is not why you're there. You're there to get guns or whatever, and the dialogue's just there to sort of like get you from level to level. Um, but if you're doing a proper ass, like I'm doing a short film or a novel or a short story or something like that, the, your, 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 your actual plot is the most important thing, I would argue. Or your characters. Your characters are important. And how can they go you can you just give me like just top of your head? Just name a playing card. Three. That's not a playing. That's not card. a playing card. Three of hearts. Three of hearts. <laughs> there we I'm go. <laughs> three. Too much fist and not enough the playing three. cards. Three. Three of hearts. Is there re is that like your favorite card? Yeah, I mean, it's the card that identifies. You identify three of hearts. Yeah. Very cool. You you saw the deck right? Another question. You saw the deck, though, right? No. When you, it just, it just, sorry, what's your name? Elliot. Elliot? Yeah. Could you, get to, could you get to the, just hold the mic for a second. Okay, sure. What was, just from the, if the top card was one, and then there's 52 cards, where was the three of hearts? Oh, hell. Uh. Just like, just, no, no, like, just real quick, it's in your instinct. subconscious. Just in I would your, say just like towards the start. I'm yeah, just in your subconscious, number. give me a number. Um, four of four. F four. Four from the top? Four from the top. <laughs> Four clubs, I guess? No, fourth from the top. Fourth from the, That's where fourth you think from that the card top. is. Oh, probably like, um, maybe like 40th from the bottom. Four, yeah, four. We'll say four. You said four. Four works. All right, have a seat. That's good. Next question. I have trouble with directions. Over here. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. So, since you started, mm -hmm. the streets that your original apartment, I don't know if you're still there. Yes. It's gotten very, very famous. Yes, it's gotten very famous. Uh, so we moved, but yes, there are people there, but also it's become more of a commercial street. Like, it's like, <laughs> this is going to sound hilarious. There's like shipping, there's like a weed dispensary on that street now, like no joke. Uh, Quarter Digital is still there. But yeah, they still, they get a lot of sort of drive-by traffic, I've heard. I've heard, yeah. Yes, 100%. Like crazily so. Yeah, I mean, it comes with the territory, right? It, it sucks, but that's just how it is, you know. Um, so what was so this was this was here the whole time, right? Okay, so we said four, and what was your favorite card again? Three of hearts. Three, hearts. Three, hearts. Sorry. Three of hearts, and you said four, yeah. and we've seen this. This was here the whole time. This is no trickery. This is just my webcam, right? One. Two. I'm gonna feel like an ass. <laughs> three. Now, if you said three, it would have been this card, and you would have been wrong, right? Okay. Let's be clear. This is the fourth card. This is number four, right? Yeah. I'm going to put it right there. Not going to touch it. That was the fourth card. You said four. You said three of hearts. You could have said literally any other number. How weird would that be? Good eye. Good eye. Let's give a hand for what's I forgot your name. What's your name? What? Uh, Elliot. Elliot, stand up. Give a, let's give a hand around everybody. That's freaky, man. That's some freaky stuff, isn't it? <laughs> I'm almost done. That's some freaky There's stuff. Well done. Good, ca good call. <laughs> Anybody got chills? I got chills from that. Is there, oh, wait, real quick. Are there any magic nerds in the, in the audience? Okay. You just reminded me of the old David Blaine YouTube video, the guy who would, like, Go time travel and be a demon. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's fun. That's fun. That's good times, right? Uh, so, um, uh, 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 what is the what is the final word of this story? Oh boy. Trombone. Trombone. We'll go with trombone. Sorry, this is not going to work that very well, but we'll go with trombone. <laughs> oh, it's like kind of a little bit washed out.
Where is your wallpaper? <laughs> you want me to hold it? Oh, no, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Um, this is a. Is it match your how much time do I have left, Anthony? How much time you got left? You have 14 minutes left. No, how uh, much time do you need? Oh, I need about five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. All right. Do that. We'll do that one in a second. Um, questions. Somebody, would somebody who's popular, given the paradigms of like current viral videos, they still have access to that same kind of connective tissue? I think so, because at the end of the day, it's still filmmaking. But I will say, though, you can go down, the, you go down a different route. I think it's like, for example, it's easier to be a comedy guy and not be a filmmaker. Right, because again, when we say filmmaking, I'm, I'm, you know, I got into it because I wanted to do TV, film, video, television stuff because I was growing up on going to Blockbuster, yeah, yeah and renting yeah. movies, yeah. and cheating my, uh, every Friday and Saturday in my family, actually, believe it or not. Yeah, and, and, cheating, uh, and cheating the uh, system where they had the youth-restricted viewing titles and my brother would stay outside because the, the, our home phone number would go to a cell phone and you could tie your cell phone to the home phone number, which was my mom's cell phone. So we borrowed the cell phone and I would rate, rent R-rated movies and then he would be in the outside being like, yes, that's okay, when they <laughs> called. I got into it for that, you know? So, I know, I know. <laughs> Um, so, you know, I think that you, but that, like, now there's like a whole different thing. Cause like, I think if you're, I think if you're a vlogger or if you're, you know, one of these guys, it's like, it's fine. It's just, it's, it's not filmmaking. It's something else, which is not a problem, but it is something else. So I think it's easy to be something else, uh, and not just be, uh, only a filmmaker, uh, on YouTube. And it really kind of comes down to, it's like, well, what do you want to do? These, you know, it's like a new, it's a new career path that opened up, right? You have to decide whether or not you, you care about that and you want to do that. Another question over here in front here. Uh, Video Copilot is fantastic for After Effects. Premiere Pro is like, it's not that complicated a program, it's just editing, so you want as much footage as you can get your hands on. So try editing as much weird stuff as you can. Good exercise is um, try, just for the heck of it, try editing your own trailer for a movie. Take all the footage from a movie and just be like, all right, I'm gonna do my own trailer, my own music, my own stuff. Um, you don't have to show it anywhere, you know, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be anything, but that's a good one too. Like try and take a trailer, try and do like a, a promo, right? Try and do a little two minute promo, try and do a music video um, with a song that you like. Try and do as much different things as possible. That'll get you pretty familiar or pretty quick. Videocopilot.net is maybe the, still to this day, the best spot for, for that kind of stuff. Another question. Ooh, all in right here. First year animation student. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like recommended or I guess like like essential visual principles or cinematography? Uh, Five C's of cinematography is a good book to to check on that. Um, one of oh I, actually I love this. I'll show this real quick. One of my favorite things. One, one of my favorite things is Soderbergh. Do you want to learn everything you need to know? Everything you need to know about cinematography. <laughs> Website. I'm looking for his personal website. So Soderbergh's personal website's really cool. The Soder blog. <laughs> um, let me see if he does it. Let's see if he has it. Soderbergh, Indiana Jones. All right. And it's still up. Please be still up. Please be still up. Yes, excellent. Okay, so Soderbergh took this. This is Raiders of the Lost Ark. All he do, all he did was. Oh, it's so good. All he did was turn it black and white, and then add ambient music to it, so that you could not pay attention to the pretty colors, or the plot, or the dialogue, or the dialogue. Right. All this is is Indiana Jones with a with a. So, you know what's crazy? 
this movie still is good. Like, you'll watch it. I'm afraid of starting this. You'll watch it, and you'll keep watching it. Because why? Because Steven Spielberg fucking knows what he's doing. Like, you literally, like, right now, like, I know this is a bad guy. How, how the fuck do I know this is a bad guy? It's the lighting. It's the angle. It's the look. All this stuff. I, I get everything I need to know about Indiana Jones right here. What? He's kind of a little bit, he's, 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 he's messy. He's a little bit, he's disheveled, right? Just from staging and this stuff. I don't have any clues to go off of. This is all just visual knowledge here, right? You know exactly where everything is. You know exactly what the move is. You know that the you know that the the, the, the natives are on this guy's side. They they have him cornered, right? Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. That you're not getting anything. You're not using. You don't have any dialogue. You don't have anything. This whole movie is just played through this, and this is a master class in staging, composition, and storytelling with just, again, just visuals, just staging, just the way the actors look at each other, the use of close up. That's it. Anybody who is interested in filmmaking and wants to like get like literally get a just a master class in it look at this right here watch this all the way through and be astounded by how much it's being communicated without any dialogue without any sound uh and again without color any of that stuff you just know even just from contrast from like where he's going as he steps in from light to dark you know, bars on fire this whole sequence is fantastic as well this will give you appreciation but i highly recommend that you do that that's a good place to start because it's like who's the, who's the best in the world at this is Spiel, spielberg are you almost done there, Anthony? I am. Okay. Well, I'm going to do one, one more trick real quick. We have, Go ahead. Do okay. it. It's not going to take that very long for us to play through this. So they did a study, and they found that people tend to do better uh, under pressure, as it, as it were. So go ahead. Um, uh, you who just asked the question, say stop whenever you want. Hey, nope. Anytime? No? Okay. All right. One more time. Can you, huh? Just, say, just, just whenever you want, right? Stop. Okay. Good enough. So, oh my gosh. Stuff everywhere. <laughs> I'm running out of time. Uh, you stopped on. It's fine. It's not a real timer. You can just. No, it is. It is going. It is. No, it is. Okay. I'm doing a thing. <laughs> there. Uh, was it? Ace. Okay. Oh, shoot. Hold on. Let me. I think, sorry. I have jokers. I take the jokers out. No, it's backwards. No, it's I can't see it anyway. Yeah, you need to see it. Sorry, 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 sorry. All right, we're gonna bring him back. Lose them, get him in the middle. There. All right. Okay. How much? Oh, geez. Oh, geez. Uh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. I know. I know. I know. I know. All right. All right, all right. Uh, number from. Uh, 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 oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Shuffle them up. Lose them. God. God. They're getting bored. Look at them. They're getting I know, bored. I know, I know. Uh, one. <laughs> Uh, nope, that wasn't it. No, nope. you're fucking it up. Look at all the, the all these people came to see it. Here's the two, two. Here's the cut. It's not good. Ace. One more. One more. Faster. Okay. Up. Oh, shit. Damn it. Wait. Did I get? No, I didn't get. Ah, hold on. Three Fucked up. You can do it. You can do your thing now. I lost it. I lost my cards. I wasn't Aww. there. I screwed it up. Sorry. Or did I? No, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, one out of two ain't bad. Anthony, shall we play our game? Okay. Everyone close your eyes. Do it. You can do it now. Yes, you can close your eyes. <laughs> okay. So, uh, to, to just remind everybody what we're doing, uh, I said I would write a twine story based on just random suggestions from you um, and that we would play through it together. So, this is partially just because I thought it'd be entertaining for me and nobody else, and partially because if you're thinking about like, well, I want to learn how to design games, or I want to learn how to write, or I want to learn how to, how to write stories or whatever, Twine is fantastic for that. It allows you to do really basic branching really simply, and I did this entire thing in front of you in less than an hour. I mean, it's going to feel like I did it in 10 minutes, but that's not the point. Um, I highly recommend checking Twine out just for your own fun. You're never going to make money doing it, but if you enjoy writing, that's the point. So. We're just going to go through this, and it'll come to certain choice moments, and I will poll the audience to see what we do, okay? And we have five minutes left. All right, so once upon a time, Gar so remember, uh, you guys told me it's got to be about Garfield. His yeah. greatest enemy has to be himself. He has to go try to find the, 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 the Holy Grail, and uh, hen hentai, <laughs> uh, a giant robot, and um, uh, <laughs> fish sticks have to be involved. And fisting is involved. Okay, oh, so I'm just gonna read through this quickly. So once upon a time, Garfield found himself I'm gonna, in a hold on. I'm gonna give you. I'm going to give you a soundtrack. How's that? Okay. All right. 
Uh, Garfield found himself in a sticky situation. He was in the pits of depression, thanks to his own behavior. For years, he thought, thought only three things, design your naps and the other destructive as Earthball neighbor normal. Normal was bad news. And the recent news, however, uh, Garfield had finally realized that by focusing on the bad news, he was ignoring the good news, that Jesus was risen. And that by drinking from his cup, Garfield would achieve eternal life. An eternity of design, an eternity of naps, an eternity of dick-stomping normal, who despite his eyelashes is canonically male. Garfield looked... <laughs> Garfield looked out the window of John's house. He knew in his moment he had two choices. He could go ask John for advice, or he could strike out on his own and find the grail by pure feline intuition. So we decided he'd go to John, right? Yeah. Garfield kicked open the door to John's bedroom, revealing the familiar sight of John hunched over his laptop, the rhythmic thwap, thwap, thwap of palm flesh against pelvic skin, <laughs> serving as a percussive backdrop to the explicit sounds of hardcore pornography. Falcon Pawunch, the animated hentai porn star not said. Gonna, not going to do the soundtrack on that <laughs> one. A brief glance at the URL informed Garfield that FistonHentaiGames.com was one of uh, John's favorites. Father, Garfield said, I require your wisdom. Ah, John said, you have spake and thus interrupted the momentum of my erotic extravaganza. Where shall I find the Holy Grail, Garfield asked. You wish to seek the Grail, John asked, twirling around, speed him, flinging off his outstretched finger. It is not for those such as you. The world is not for those such as me, Garfield sneered. Tell me where the crop of Christ resides and I will leave you to your self-abuse. John ejaculated, but not that kind of ejaculated. Fine. You must go to the Garden of Olives. I know it well. And you must partake of the endless breadsticks and salad, John continued, we your tears running up in his eyes, and you must end them. Garfield gasped. Garfield kicked open the door of the Olive Garden, ready to fuck anything and everything up. Welcome to Olive Garden, said a frustratingly buff blonde man by the host podium. I'm Chad. Uh, and when you're here, you're family. If we are family, Garfield said, then I'm your father, Chad. He grabbed Chad by the scruff of the neck, the scent of Axe body spray and misogyny emanating from him like seen from a hot pan of lasagna. And your father demands satisfaction, Garfield said, his eyes bugging from his sockets enough that he could feel Chad's acne on his cornea. Y -y -y yes, sir, said Chad, who thought Gamergate was about ethics. Chad gestured at a nearby table, silently asking Garfield to sit. Garfield had a choice to make. He could sit peacefully or stab Chad in the neck and then sit peacefully. Stab him? Father is disappointed in you, Garfield this is, said. By the way, this is what you get when you assert Olive Garden on Spotify. Oh, good. With a flick of his pointer finger, Garfield unsheathed the single sharpened claw that caught the light and made an anime shing noise. <laughs> yes, said Chad, this is the fate I deserve. Before he could finish his valediction, the sudden swipe of a cuticle against carotid cut him and his throat utterly silent. Chad, who once tweeted that if you think about it, Trump fans and Hillary fans aren't that different, bled out on the floor of the Olive Garden, wishing he'd chosen a different path in life. Then Garfield ordered the endless salad and breadsticks. Bring me the endless, Garfield said, firing his eyes in a turgid direction beneath his fur. Bring me the endless that I may destroy and prove myself worthy of Jesus' sippy cup. And lo, they did, and lo, Garfield began to eat. But it was in this moment that Garfield's old nemesis returned, himself. As he brought the fourth breadstick to his mouth, he felt it, deep in his stomach, no deeper than that, his soul, the emptiness, the whole, the, the endless void that was empty and yet full, full of the single immutable fact, everything will die. On a cosmic scale, the universe's natural entropy will destroy all that is or all that ever was. Ooh, I, have good, I have a good one for, for, uh, for that one. Really <laughs> Shakespeare's works will be lost to time. Everyone who ever experienced love oh, and the religious. recipients of that love will be nothing more than dust swept up by an indifferent galactic custodian. Garfield looked at the breadstick in his hand. It meant nothing, nothing at all. And yet, and oh, yet... Wait, wait, wait. That was a kind of freedom. If the breadstick in his hands was irrelevant, the conventional human definitions, conventional human constructs were also irrelevant. Endless breadsticks and salad? Don't make me laugh. Your classifications are irrelevant. Why breadsticks? Why salad? The universe doesn't care. With a swipe of his arm, Garfield threw the breadsticks and salad to the ground. Ha ha ha, bellowed an unseen voice. So Garfield, you admit to th defeat. Garfield looked at the heavens in defiance. No, Garfield said. I admit that there is no victory, and thus there is also no defeat. Rummaging in his fur, Garfield pulled out a stale rectangle of fried batter. Well, what is that? The voice asked. This, Garfield said, is a fish stick, allegedly. Since God is dead, blasphemer. And since God is dead, Garfield continued, there is no earthly or heavenly power to enforce the idea that this must be a fish stick. No, the voice hit Sessig what was to come. Therefore, Garfield shouted, this is not a fish stick. This is every breadstick, no, and every salad that has ever existed. This is the unlimited breadstick and salad combo. In the ultimate scale of space and time, this is everyone that ever lived and everyone who ever died, everyone who ever smiled and everyone who ever cried, every savior and every Chad. Garfield shoved the fish stick down his throat with threw a fist dripping with saliva, and I have eaten it. Then a giant robot kicked off the roof of the Olive Garden. Garfield looked up at the giant robot, sunlight glinting off its servos. Name thyself, whispered Garfield, knowing that this robot was the source of the voice he'd heard earlier. I am the memory of God, the robot spake. I am all that remains of him. I have solved your challenge, Garfield said. Now give me that grail. I will, the robot said, but know that it comes with a terrible cost. For to earn immortality is to witness the death of your loved ones. I have no loved ones, Garfield said. Get to the point. Fine, the memory of God said. You know the risks. Will you take the grail knowing the agony entails or will you refuse it to show true wisdom? Garfield thought for a moment. Then he made his decision. 
Fine, asshole, said the robot. LOL, nice, Garfield said, and then went back to the ruined Olive Garden and filled the Holy Grail with Sierra and missed it and drank it and lived forever. Remember, we have to end with the word trombone. And initially, Garfield was lonely, but then he realized he could make his loved ones drink from the Grail as well, and so he poured the Lord's Mountain Dew down John's throat, even as John thrashed and resisted with every muscle in his body. Drink of it, Garfield said. Drink and become forever. And so John did. And years passed. Decades. Centuries. Millennia. Global warming baked the earth, the sun exploded, sending white hot star shards throughout the solar system, and all life was exterminated save for two men. They flowed through the cosmos, infinite and unending, everything and nothing. And quadrillions of years later, after the universe rebooted itself, for everything that dies must eventually live again, the first humans on earth crawled out of the muck and looked up into the sky, and there they saw two forms floating in the cosmos, watching over the planet of their birth, a planet they had long since forgotten. These new humans fell to their knees and worshipped these two beings and built machines to listen to their conversations. And after thousands and thousands of years, these new humans finally, finally captured a conversation between the two deities. What are you watching, one deity, the rotund orange one said to the other. The sound of clacking keys could be heard, as could the thwack, thwack, thwack of raw skin against raw skin. I'm re-watching my favorite video, the other god said. Usagi fists Sailor Jupiter with one hand and uses the other to give Tuxedo Mask a rusty trombone. Thank you so much! Thank you so much for coming! Have a great night!